Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be making a Flutter application that pulls from an API and then serves the data into a list view. Also, I'm sure you noticed that I am using Visual Studio Code rather than IntelliJ. I figured I might as well use it for this particular tutorial to show you guys that there are alternatives to IntelliJ if you do not want to use a full IDE and I'll link the extension that you need to install in the description so that you can get started with Flutter inside of Visual Studio Code if you'd like. So originally I was going to use the JSON placeholder fake online REST API for this tutorial, but I decided that rather than just using lorem ipsum and a bunch of gobbledygook, we should use some actual data. So we're going to be making use of the swappy Star Wars API. This swappy API is basically just a giant encyclopedia for all things Star Wars. So they have like everything from characters to planets to starships. So it's fairly ideal for this type of application. Okay, so we want to make a new project inside of Visual Studio Code. We hold down Control, Shift, and we hit P. And when we open this up, we can type in Flutter, new project, and then we can type in the name of our project. And I'm just going to call this Star Wars API with an underscore. Then it will ask you which folder you want to create your project in, and then it will generate everything. After you select the folder where you want your application to reside, it will generate the standard boilerplate application for Flutter. And I'm just going to remove all the boilerplate from this file. We'll start with our main function, and we just kind of want to get a skeleton for this particular main function built up so that we know how we're going to be building this application. We create void main, and then we add the run app function inside of it, and then we want to put a material app widget inside of that, and that will get rid of any errors, but of course if we ran this, it would just generate an empty material application. All right, so now we want to create a class that will be a stateful widget. I'm just going to call this Star Wars data, and we're going to have it extend stateful widget, of course, because it will have the create state function inside of it. So then to wire this up appropriately, we need to create a second class for the actual state. So we have our Star Wars data class, and then we have our Star Wars state class. The Star Wars data class extends the stateful widget and it implements the create state function, whereas our Star Wars state class will extend the state class and it also has our Star Wars data class inside of it. We can further wire this up by just pointing it towards our Star Wars data class because that will be the widget that we're ultimately using as the base for this application. Now we do need to make a few more imports so that we can handle HTTP requests. We can also convert the information that we're getting from JSON into Dart primitives, and we need to have the ability to do all of this asynchronously. So first we'll import Dart async, then we want to import Dart convert, and this will be the library that we're going to use to convert the JSON into data. And then finally, we want to bring in the HTTP package and we'll alias this as HTTP. And of course, this HTTP package will allow us to perform an HTTP request on our API to get the information. Then inside of our Star Wars state class, we want to create a final variable for our URL. And we're just going to use the API starships node. So we'll just put in final string URL equals HTTPS swappy.co API starships. We also want to create a list item so that we can store all the data that we're getting from this HTTP request and then pass it into our widget. Okay, so now we want to set up the method that will make our request. And we're going to do this by specifying that the return type is a future type that wraps a string. We're going to call this get SW data, standing for get Star Wars data. And of course, this function needs to be asynchronous. And then inside of this function, we'll create our response variable, which is res. And this particular variable is going to quote unquote await for the HTTP get function to resolve itself. For this to work, we need to add the URL and we want to encode all the response data as JSON. And we also need to add the response headers. We need to basically tell the response that we only want JSON. So we're going to say, okay, accept application JSON. And now that we've made our request and we've gotten our response back, we need to use this to set up the state for our application. 
So we're going to call the set state function inside of this get sw data function res body equals json dot decode and we want to decode the res dot body and this will be all of the stuff that we got back from our response and then we want to take our data list and specifically set it equal to the area of our json called results. If we take a look at the JSON result that we're going to get from the Swapy API, you can take a look at why we want the results object specifically. You can see here that it gives us back a list, and this list has 10 items inside of it. Each item has its own name, its model, manufacturer, and a bunch of other random things inside of it. And we specifically want to target the name and the model for these items and then bring them into our application. So we'll get the results list and then we can query inside of that list inside of our list view. To finish off our data getting function, we just want to return a string that says success. And this will essentially just tell us whether or not we've actually successfully gotten the JSON. Now we want to create our build function and this build function is just going to return a scaffold. We'll give our scaffold an app bar and then inside of this app bar we'll give it the text that just says Star Wars Starships. So this is just the title of the application and we'll give the background color a colors of amber accent. So our app bar will just have an amber color. From here I'm going to pull up the Android emulator and I'm going to run the application so that you can see how we can use the flutter hot reload to our advantage to do iterative designing. Normally to make our application run inside of Visual Studio Code we would just hit F5 and this would run this launch.json debugger which would launch the application. There is a reason why I'm specifically not going to be doing this and that's because currently there is a bug that makes it so that if we do it this way the application will not hot reload properly. So instead what I'm going to do is open up the terminal here at the bottom and type in flutter run dash dash preview dash dart dash two. And I specifically need to put in that flag because I am using dart two syntax inside of this application. Now make sure you've saved your application before you run this, otherwise you may run into some issues when you go to build it. Okay, so our application has opened up and you can see here we actually have an error and that's because we have the list view builder with nothing inside of it. First we need to put the item count so the list view knows how many items it needs. We'll take our our data and we'll say okay well if data equals null then we want to pass in zero otherwise we want to pass in data dot length then we want to add our item builder function and the item builder function just takes in the build context and then the integer index and we're just going to use an anonymous function for this particular item. As you can see, our application now is loading appropriately because we now have the item builder function inside of it. To initiate the hot reload, all I had to do was click in the terminal and hit the R button on my keyboard. So here is our title. It says Star Wars Starships in white. And then the background is the amber accent color. And if we want to change that color, we can type in a new color and then hit R and you'll see that it will automatically reload with the color that we've specified. And in fact, I want to go to the deep purple accent. Okay, so now let's build out our item builder. Our item builder function is going to return a container. Now you'll notice that if I type in return container, it will throw an error. So I need to actually use the new keyword here, even though this is a Dart 2 application. And I assume this error is a result of the fact that this is still an alpha. Inside of this container, we want to have a center to center all of our content. And then because we want everything to be in a column, we want to add a column to the center. Then we want to specify the cross axis alignment of this particular widget. And we want to specify that we want it to stretch from left to right on the screen. So for this, all we have to do is just put in cross axis alignment dot stretch. Inside of our column we want to have children widgets. This means that we can have more than one widget side by side. And so what we'll do inside of this list of widgets is we'll have two cards each with a container inside of it. Inside of our first cards container we'll give it a text and our text will have our data with index and then name. So this will specifically get the name of the item based on the list view index of this particular 
child. And then we'll style the text of this particular child. And we'll make it so that the font size is 18. And then it will have a color of black 45. Now in our second card, we can also add text. And this particular text element, we want to specifically point it towards index and model. So we have the name of the starfighter and then the model of the starfighter below it. And this one will have a text style of font size 18 and then a color of black 54 as well. Now also for both of the containers inside of the cards, we also want to add some padding. So we just put in padding and the padding that we want to use is edge insets dot all 15.0. So it has a decent amount of size all around it. So now that this is finished, you'd think that we could start our application, but this is not going to work because we haven't set up the initial state for our widget. So we need to go all the way down to the bottom here and create an override for the init state function. We'll override init state and then we'll pass in super dot init state and then we want to pass in this dot get sw data so that it actually calls and runs the get sw data function. We can click into our terminal and we can hit shift r and this will run a full restart on our application. Now we actually have all of the information inside of our list view and we can scroll up and down and see all of the other information that's in here and there should be 10 different elements each one with a name and a model so this is all well and good but let's make some labels for each of the items so that we know exactly what we're looking at so what we can do here is where our text was we can put a row and then our row will have children which is a list of widgets and inside of this children we can reinsert our text element and then before it we can insert another text element we'll have the first one in this case be name colon with a space and then we'll have the information get served if we reload this you can see in our application now our name element has a name label and then it has the actual data afterwards now we can also do the same thing for our model. All we really have to do is copy this parenthesis to this parenthesis and then paste it in where the other card is and then just replace the text with model and model. And on restart, you can see now we actually have it saying name and then model. Now I don't really like this color, so I'm going to make the name black 87 and then I'll make the model colors.red. And you can see here that once I reload it, everything sort of changes and goes into effect. We can also add more cards. So for instance, if we wanted to add cargo capacity, we could just copy and paste our card and then just change the appropriate fields. And you can see here, now we have name, model, and then cargo capacity. And if we look at our API, there are quite a few fields for each item. We could implement all of these fields if we'd like. Also, if we wanted to, rather than putting the call to get SW data inside of our init state function, we could create a button inside of our widget instead that would call this function on press which would then populate our list view anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did feel free to like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the box below and if you disliked it then by all means downvote it as much as you like have a good day